Also, the best part about this project, no iron needed. a dress or a costume that you cannot get out of your head from the second it connects itself to your eyeballs? Well for me, that dress is this one that Zendaya wore to the Met Gala. As the youths would say, it lives rent free in my brain. That's right, little Zendaya's up there with all of the amenities that my brain offers. Free heating, lifetime supply of movie quotes that are partially incorrect, but every now and then when I'm thinking really hard, it tends to make that dial-up noise. Hello. A little late for that, but. So as you all know, I'm um, a little bit late on trends. A few months ago, there was a thing called the Met Gala Challenge. People would recreate some of their favorite outfits. It's kind of just a coincidence that she wore this to the Met Gala because I have just been completely and utterly bewitched with this dress. So I love Zendaya. I'm not fully convinced that she's of this earth. She might just be a goddess that was sent down to mock us with her ethereal beauty. So the dress that she wore was heavily inspired by Joan of Arc. I have a very tangible fascination with Joan of Arc. I'm not particularly a religious person, but I just, you know, female empowerment and all that jazz. And, that jazz. and there's just something about women in shining armor. I will admit that her name is not quite as eloquent in an American accent as it is in French. Jeanne. Dark, Jeanne Dark. Joan of Arc. So needless to say, when I saw this outfit, I knew that it had to be recreated. I thoroughly enjoy making armor, a blend of all of my interests in one dress. First things first, we're gonna head over to design phase and plan this baby out. But before we do that, today's video is sponsored and to talk a little bit about that is sponsor Rachel. So this week's project and this week's video is sponsored by Acorn TV. Acorn TV is a streaming service that contains hours and hours of beautiful British television. I feel like it's always so exciting to try a new streaming service and then just have so many more options than you did before. Shiny and new and David Tennant. There are so many things that I instantly added to my list. There's documentaries, there's original shows, there's movies. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. They have the Crypt of Tears on there, which I had always meant to see, but I never knew where to watch it. They also have a show I'm super excited to watch, which is A Stitch in Time, which is about historical fashion. One about archeology, span which you know I love. I'm nosy. And if that includes wanting to know what's buried in the ground, Acorn TV adds new releases every Monday, premium commercial free content for $5.99 per month. Super easy for me to just get cuddly and cozy. I can go right on my smart TV and Acorn TV has a little app. So if you guys did want to try out Acorn TV, you can head to acorn.tv and use the promo code for 30 days free. Thank you so much Acorn TV for sponsoring this video. And before ado's are in any way furthered, let's get back to it. Okay, so this dress obviously has a lot going on here. We've got the neck armor, the shoulder armor, the waistband and leg armor, and then the long flowing chainmail-esque dress underneath. This looks like a football play. Blue for two! So now that we've got the design planned out, let's talk about materials. This will make a whole lot more sense if you've seen my previous video, but I'm not gonna explain it. For the armor, we are going to attempt to do it with warbler. Yoink. So Warbla is a thermoplastic. If you heat it up, you can kind of form it to how you want it. And then as it cools down, stays in that shape. It has sort of a rough edge and then smooth edge. And the smoother edge is more of an adhesive. Sandwich the two layers to make a thicker piece. I think a big part of this project is going to be planning out the shapes that I want practicing on maybe little pieces of foam. From head to toe, first things first, is the neck piece. It looks like it's a neck band and then that kind of circular shoulder plate. Now attached to that are the arm pieces. Waist piece, which is kind of just like a big belt. And then from there are the thigh guards. I, I, 
Logically, the first place to start is the neck piece, and then I can kind of just work my way down. I'm gonna get started patterning this out and making sure when I do switch to the actual warbler, I'm not gonna waste anything and mess up because I'm a cheap ass bitch and this shit is expensive. So basically that means it's time to activate floor troll time. Floor troll time. Life hack. Cushy for my tushy. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, much like I would if I was making a garment out of fabric, is to figure out the measurements that I want. We will take my neck measurement. Probably need something to write this down with. Yep, business bitch. I got this back when I thought 2020 was gonna be my year. <laughs> yes, yeah, good. And then for the back piece, we will probably duplicate this front piece, but modify it a little bit. Let's make a mock-up out of foam. We want that neck piece, and 15 inches. My eyes are down here. Let's try this on. So it's a little too wide. I think we'll make it six instead of seven inches. Okay, let's try that. Ooh. Yeah. Good enough. Let's start cutting out the warble. favorite new games to play in quarantine is if I were me and I am where would I put this item great fun Aha! Futzing around with how it fits and then making sure the collar is a good length and I'm not feeling like I'm choking or anything. And also I need to start thinking about doing the back pieces. It's kind of like a puzzle piece. They're gonna fit pretty well here. Then I'll cut up the back pieces and make it into those four separate pieces. Day two. This is my no bullshit look. Can you tell? What I did on the back, nothing is attached or anything right now. Made sort of like foam hinges on the inside. Moving downwards, now I'm gonna work on the arm pieces. Now for this, I think I'll probably do the same thing and make a pattern piece out of foam. Replicate that with warbler. Let's get started. On the arm, arm armor. Arm, armor, arm armor. Just need to zoom out so you can fully appreciate the position that I'm in because I don't fully understand it. You guys thought I was kidding when I said floor troll. It's a state of mind. For the shoulder plates, I purposely cut out one of the layers a bit bigger so that the edges were able to fold down, and this just makes it just a little bit more secure. Thank you. 
To add the edging details, I cut out some thin strips of foam, used handy dandy contact cement, put it on both surfaces, and then simply just laid it down. A little longer than a few minutes later. Good morning. <laughs> So today is kind of another no-nonsense day. We have a whole lot of work to do, which coincidentally is probably what my old eyebrow waxer used to think. Oh boy, she heavy. And this is where I last left it. It's finished connecting all of these shoulder blades together. I'm not gonna fully attach it now because I wanna paint these separately and then put them together, but basically made just a really quick warbla nail. Thing. It's gonna allow me to actually move my arm up and down. Quickly whipped up waist band. This one really wide strip of warbla, then heated it up and folded it in on itself and folded the edges in. And I kind of have something that looks like this. But I will add just Velcro here. Now, quite obviously I did run out of the black warbla and I had to start using the kind of original and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Feels like pig ear that you can buy for your dog. That'll do, pig. Today, I'm going to get started on the thigh guard armor, but this is going to be a little interesting. She has kind of the same thing going on in front and in back, except in back, it's split down the middle. Basically, what I'm going to try to do is make sure I measure everything out correctly, make strips of warbla. I think I'm gonna go one ply with this just to save myself some time and make sure it's not super freaking heavy. If you look at pictures, when she moves her leg, it kind of moves with her, almost like an armadillo kind of shell. Sort of like what I did here, just make a connecting joint attach them that way so that it can still kind of move freely. I think I'm going to put strips of fabric, attach the plates onto that. Not quite sure this is going to work. Sounds like a lot of um, funkin I'm gonna have to do. Also, I'm getting a little nervous about my fabric. I did get a package today, so I'm gonna go check to see if that's the chainmail fabric that I ordered. And if not, we gotta start thinking about um, alternatives because I don't have time. Feel a bit like that Snow White meme. Ding, ding, ding. Looks like a roll of something. It's a fake plant. For now, and since my neighbor has started up his lawn mowing, it's almost December, I'm gonna get started at making the pattern for this leg armor. Wish me luck. So the thigh armor was very intimidating when I first looked at it, but once you break it down, it's not so bad. So up top, there are basically three rows of the plates. And then after that, I broke it down individually and each leg had eight different plates. I just used my best judgment here, scale each of the plates a little bit smaller than the one that came above it. I found that heating up the plates and just forming them to my thigh really helped keep their shape. Now for the fabric strips, measured the lowest point that I wanted, and then I made two shorter strips for each long strip of fabric so that it would make almost like a triangle pyramid shape. For the first three layers on the front, I decided just to heat form them together, reinforce them with hot glue. I felt like it was a little easier just to get the very specific shape that I wanted. I then glued all of these to the waistband and attached the plates at the very top to the fabric. This way they were able to be flexible and move around. Unfortunately, I'm at the fabric store. I was really hoping that for this project, I didn't have to venture into public, but you know, ain't that just the way. 
I briefly looked online last night and it does seem like they have some fabric that I could maybe schmooze into looking like chainmail. Probably gonna be like a silver lace. Ha! <sighs> oh god, that's why I don't wear turtlenecks. I feel like that James McAvoy gif. I like this mask because it kind of matches my hair and when I put it on my chin, chin beard. Wish me luck. I literally had the lace in my arm. Even though the tracking said it wasn't gonna get here for another two days, I had a moment of, I should probably just make sure. Looked at the tracking information and apparently it's gonna be here today. So that whole trip was kind of for nothing, but since I was there, I ended up grabbing a couple things. A chain, one of these babies, googly eyes that aren't microscopic, and those I'm gonna put around the neck. Let's briefly talk about what I did yesterday. I honestly can't believe that it actually worked. It is a little insect-like. I think when I spray paint it silver, it'll look a lot less gross. I thought I was alone in thinking this and then I showed Nick and was like, what do you think? And he literally just goes, you look like a bug. So quite a few googly eyes, which is a pretty neat cosplay hack if you ever need to put rivets on something. I've never worked with googly eyes that were this small before. I know you've heard that glitter is like, uh, you know, the herpes of the craft world, but I raise you teeny tiny little googly eyes. They're everywhere. I'm not surprised if I'll be finding them everywhere I go in this house for the next four years. But yes, while I wait ever so patiently for the mailman to drop off that fabric, I think I'm gonna get started on painting this. Make sure there isn't a million strings of glue. It was a mess and kind of reminded me of that scene in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. You know the one. Put on a couple layers of Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip is basically a rubber coating. Will help smooth that out and then make it look like metal when I go to paint it. So yeah. Let's get to work. It's here. Ugh, gross. <laughs> You're really checking that out, huh? So pretty. Okay, so now that this is finally here, we can get started on the construction of the actual dress. Oh, so stretch. So honestly, I uh, have not really thought too much about the construction of the dress. You're really honestly not even gonna see that much of it. I think I can just kind of drape it on my dress form so that it goes like, you know, the skirt. Maybe I'll just bust out one of the skirt patterns that I use for pretty much everything. <laughs> I have one that's really long that I think might work for this. And for the train, I contemplated even doing the train. I think I'll do like a smaller version of the train, taking my skirt panels and just extending a couple of them to go in back and then just kind of angle the panels that are next to those. We'll see. Oh, big boy. So I got it all laid out, but more importantly, sometimes Frodo's ear does this where it just sticks up like that. And I felt like it was important to document. Loop it down. Look at me. Yeah, we all need a little help sometimes, huh? sleeve I kind of just winged it and grabbed a sleeve pattern that I had and just extended it so that it would be super long and then I used a very basic bodice and bodice back pattern cutting it in the specific places to match hers a little bit better. And 
then I took the front piece that I just draped and attached it. And now for my favorite part, weathering time. The fabric surprisingly worked well with my machine. It only got clogged every now and then, but not enough to make me shout profanities at it. That's usually how I measure difficulty of projects. Also, the best part about this project, no iron needed. So my friend Sarah is going to help me take these reveal photos and videos, which is, fun fact, full circle for me because she used to help me on my dumb high school videos, including a little ditty I did called Legend of Miss Spooner, a direct ripoff of Sweeney Todd. Sarah was my leading lady, and for one scene, I needed her to cry. She couldn't cry on command. <laughs> so my 15-year-old brain went... So I grabbed my mascara wand and essentially stabbed her cornea lightly. I mean, it worked, so. I'm gonna do the same makeup that I did for Ace Awards Joan of Arc look. I'll do a little bit of a wing on top because I can't resist. Shoot down a blush. Wig down. I have used this wig about a thousand times and I plan to use it about a thousand times more. That, this is not the wig that I want. You know, I thought I had found it a little too easily. I can't find the one that I was looking for because of course I can't. So I can use this one. It's pretty similar. It's just a little less curly. Great. I'm going to get the bangs situated because obviously this is a mess. I'll see you in the reveal. Wrap up time. Woof. Normally I would be wearing it in the wrap up, but it started pouring on us. So I needed to change back into my very comfy clothes because we were drenched and I looked great. This one I think was just such a blend of everything that I like to do. It was one of those projects that I was really excited about the entire time through. So even though it was a ton of work and I worked over the weekend and constantly, it didn't feel like that because I was having a lot of fun. Rewarding to see it all start to come to the together. I have a long list of dream dresses and that was definitely on it. As shitty as 2020 is, I did knock off two of my dream dresses from that list. So there's, it's something. I think the skirt could have been a little bit more dynamic 
it kind of was just there. For the time that I had, I think it works fine. I think the underdress did what it was supposed to do. I think the main focus of this is probably the armor, so I wasn't too concerned about it. I hope that you guys liked watching. Again, thank you so much Acorn for sponsoring this video. I am going to make myself a cup of coffee and start editing this bad boy. Definitely let me know if there's some iconic dresses that you would like to see me try to recreate. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel, if you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. Bye. I have decided. Yep. Yeah, okay. Will my reflection show? What do your elf ears hear? <laughs> every now and then I'll get a little. Stuck. No cactus. Hockey. You wouldn't know because you were forward, but back on defense, we had a lot of time on our hands. Yes. Although, I've never worked with googly eyes. Oh, I look like a thumb with hair. We're here for the cult stuff. <laughs> <laughs>